Alrighty, everyone. So for today's video, uh, Anthony, you know, spent a day with Filza and Nikki recently. So I figured with the short amount of time I have over these next few days, I'm going to have to check out the Filza one since it is about three minutes shorter. That doesn't really make a lot of a difference, but when the schedule is cramped, you know, every minute counts. So I have been noticing when I put out the poll for you know, video suggestions about three or four days ago at this point. I asked you guys for videos you wanted me to see, and a lot of them popped up with Empires and Third Life and Last Life. So you guys are going to have to tell me which one of uh, those you want to see first, and hopefully I can make it happen. Although, it might be pushed back just a little bit. I know it's already been over two months since the last Rife reaction, but we will get there. Anyway, though, before we get into the actual video today, if you guys have not subscribed yet, go on down and do that before we start today's video. Also, whiteboard crew, you want to be a part of it? I still don't know why I haven't filled out that row. I, I keep writing all the names up there, so please, someone remind me to fill out that third row so then I can just be done with it. Anyway, though, let's get right to the actual uh, Anthony Padilla video. I am forgetting my intros. Well, let's get right into the video. I'm Anthony Padilla, and I spent a day with Filza to uncover the truth about the five relentless years he spent surviving and crafting a world block by block, only to lose it all. I lose it all to a spider. A moment of failure catapulted his career to incomprehensible heights. He'll reveal how he went from making so little money, the government couldn't even tax him, to now supporting his entire family. And he'll address how the peer pressure to murder a main character in front of millions almost ruined him. <laughs> Hello, Phil. I'm interested nice in that you. one. By the way, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. That is very story true. of how you exploded, I think, is incredible because it began with devastating failure. Yeah. You were playing hardcore Minecraft, meaning that if you die in the game, that is it. That is a permadeath. And you spent five years yep. on this one single playthrough. Yep. And uh -huh. then a baby zombie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Say it, Took you say out. It. Let me relive it. <laughs> Sorry to give you flashbacks. The flashbacks. Of hours of gameplay on there. I'd spent a lot of time in it. It was mainly the only version of Minecraft that I liked playing. You enjoyed the high risk. Yes. <laughs> the one wrong move and you were gone forever. Pretty okay. much. It just made everything more significant. Everything I did, everything I made could just be gone mm. in the flash. What did that feel like in that moment when you lost everything? Devastation, grief and like disbelief and then eventually acceptance and like eventually i started like tearing up because i was like realizing like oh shit, it's yeah. actually just gone i feel like most people would consider that <sighs> that heartbreak in that moment though. you actually gained recognition around the world you were like memes like crazy it was nuts because of everyone just spreading it and just being like ha it's pretty funny but oh my god that sucks the news companies picked it up and I, I was on the bbc my gran like called me after which was like well i just saw you on the telly I was like, yes gran <laughs> <laughs> what did that teach Thank you, you Grandma. I appreciate you fail it. Fail hard at something. The only way is up afterwards. If you give up, then what was the point of the failure? You don't learn anything. Mm -hmm. You don't get any better. At the time, I was just that's devastated. so true. It's a necessary like part of growing and necessary part of just getting better. Do you have any idea how many hours you put into that? That specific. I can file. get you the. Ex it yeah. was a lot. <laughs> is it thousands? It was days, days of hours. So yeah, it was like thousands. It, it went, it went up. 71 full days of playtime. being like, Holy I can't God. believe that just happened. I wake up, go to work, come back from work, and then I notice there's like a, a Reddit post that's gaining a lot of traction. One of my friends who was in the stream at the time yeah. clipped it on Twitch. Uh... And then someone else took that clip, posted it to Reddit. I think they posted it a live stream fail. <laughs> and then after that, it just went... I was like, the views keep climbing. It's on 60,000. And then the next day it was on 100,000. I was like, it's not stopping. Again, I kept waking up, going to work, coming home. And you see the like climb. climb. It's like, what's going climb. on? I think the BBC interview was the wildest because I was on national television. They wanted me to come down to the studio. And I was like, no. <laughs> You're like, I'll stream. That sounds stressful. A lot of the news outlets just focused on how funny it was. Even the presenter of the BBC was like, in disbelief when he was talking about it. He's like, yeah. you lost it to a baby zombie? <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> it's just like, shut up, it. man. I get it. I lost it. Membership, subscribers, all that. Slow at first. It was like a couple of hundred and it stayed at a couple of hundred for a bit. It got higher and higher and higher when they realized I was going to keep playing hardcore and I was going to try and beat the next record. Mm. I was like, oh man, 
I should probably start uploading more content to YouTube as well. Mm. So in doing that, it also brought more people in. I made a montage of the five-year world as well, which mm. really popped off. I think that's sitting at like 20 million views or something. Damn. Holy I think maybe God. That was the main kind of like jump off point. But if I hadn't made that montage, I don't think it would have gotten shared as much as it did. What was your childhood like? I think kids growing up now do spend a ton of time playing video games. Oh yeah. They, but they, the yeah, was true. back then when I was younger, it was just a very solo thing. And I just did not want to go outside or play with anybody. Mm -hmm. like, I remember my mom being like really worried about me. She was like, he's not going to grow up like with any friends. He's going to have like social anxiety, mm -hmm. all this stuff, which I kind of did. But <laughs> besides the point, <laughs> hey, I still I have that though. Don't worry. Um, and I, I, I liked just the control and like the basic mm -hmm. sort of like, I can do this and get good and just grow from there pretty much. Was there a reason that you avoided interacting with other kids? All their kids just scared me. I was just always worried because I got bullied a lot when I was younger to such a point where I got moved out of my school to a new one. Back then I had like super blonde hair and I stood out like amongst everybody who had like brown and black hair and I was very pale. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like that was like a key factor in it because mm. it was just constant and they'd like pull my hair and stuff and push me yeah. on the ground. Because of that initial bullying That's at the start, rough. I was just so untrustworthy of just anyone that was nice to me because I mm. thought it was just a trick. One day I listened to my mom and went outside and mm. tried to play with the kids they heard that i had a, a swing set and a, and a slide in my back garden mm. and they were just like can we go in your back garden and play on the swing can we go can we go and then i was just like sure yeah i'll trust you <laughs> it immediately got broke by some big kid on a skateboard he like rode down it and my mom got like really pissed she like kicked them out but i remember speaking to them and they just didn't want anything to do with me you know how kids can be they're so mean like, yeah especially that is so age. true so dude kids are pretty hard and just they're, they're so mean alone you can vividly remember one of the first memories that shaped you gods metro lands <laughs> rest in peace you know how like when you grow up and like you realize you can only remember back so far this moment was like the moment my brain turned on this is like, your, your like on. first memory that you can remember it's pretty high up there yeah mm. but it was such a pinnacle moment of me just like realizing that i wasn't invincible i was just an absolute lunatic child i would climb on trees I would jump off buildings. I say buildings, they were like small buildings. Don't that like that sounds like a lot of children though. I feel like a lot of children do that anyway. Climb on. Uh -huh. There was these steps that went all the way up to the, the roller coaster. And I remember running up those steps, just like feeling like on top of the world. And my dad just went, whoa, 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 whoa stop. You'll break it. You'll break your spine. You'll, you'll crack your head open. And I was just like, oh. And just froze and then just slowly <laughs> curled up on a ball on the step. And I remember that was like the, the first moment. Your dad gave you tears. Oh shit. I could die at any moment. Like I'm not in control as much mm. as I thought I was. That what happened then uh, leads me to just kind of like plan for the worst in most cases. When I go into like a cinema, for example, I'll know how long it takes to get to the fire exit. When people come in, I'll be like, okay, this person probably can't run very fast. This person definitely is going to get. Oh me. my god! So I'm just thinking, okay, if I if I get up, I can grab her. We can run that way. It's faster that way. I go down the stairs. I might trip here, but if I do trip, I can fall into this bit. I try to map out every scenario in my head. God, it's like doing on the fly calculations. I yeah, suck at those. About like ten seconds. If I well, about eight seconds. <laughs> if I hop the table. Oh, you're gonna hop. But the you've table. got that driveway too, so yeah. I'd have to hop that if it's locked which i'm assuming it's locked it's not locked i mean it is locked it is locked it is locked and we have our armed guards there's several armed guards outside with yeah. guns <laughs> yes because it's legal in america yep yeah when did you start streaming i want to say 2006 or 7 maybe it this was, was on Twitch. Justin.tv. Which was called Justin.tv. Yep, the old little monkey. I called. don't <laughs> even <laughs> remember but that. I used to make videos and like montages. I would also watch live streams, watching the live stream through Windows Media Player with like this weird link that they gave you. Like 240p, I think, or less. So I've always been into media and like sharing media. I always yeah. found it like really fascinating and fun. It so is as soon fun. As I realized I could do that live. I was like, holy shit, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to do it. Did anyone? watch you back then barely <laughs> like one to two people maybe mm. um and then like eventually the more i did it the more um friends i'd made would join and just kind of like hang out and just be like oh phil stream and i'll just mm. see what he's up to what drew you to live stream was it feeling like you were with friends the live interaction with chat being able to see like some of my friends like respond and stuff to funny mm. things that happened and also just kind of having like some sort of a catalog of just stuff that I did, like anything cool I did, 
on a game wouldn't just be for me anymore. Um, I could share it. Video games were kind of a form of escapism. What were you escaping from? It's reality, pretty much. I was so bored of it. Just, all, <laughs> just like, reality. Dude, yeah. that, is, that is so true. That's exactly what VR is for me. It... If anyone ever sees my Discord like status, you will see that I am on VR probably a solid anywhere between three to eight hours like every day or every other day. I don't know why. It's just such a good escape oh, from like, reality. Just, walk place. just to go to another reality. <laughs> move my body. Yeah, pretty much. I was just like, man, I really enjoy playing this game where I can fly. That's cool. Like, yeah. Way more fun than real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can't fly in real life. That's lame. Even if it was only to like... Well, you can, but Including planes, your wife yeah. who yep. is here. He's on the back. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, and by the way, this episode is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, an app and browser extension that lets no. you virtually place your no. computer or your phone no. anywhere in the How world. How do I get past this? Support us and surf the web safely from anywhere. Now, back to the world of Philza. Thank you, Anthony. Streaming Minecraft Hardcore, the five year world I lost. And she joined the chat and was just like, hey, what's up? Like, just yeah. wanted to like talk. I ended up taking her on a tour of my whole world at the time. She was in my chat specifically to learn about Minecraft because she used to work with kids. And like, that was something that they were super interested in. So she wanted to learn oh. more about it to better kind of reward them for good behavior and that. And she was learning from you. Yeah, pretty much. That's kind of cool. You met up in person, the rest was history. Oh dude, you skipped a huge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 10 days later. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of just became friends with like my friends at the same time and then eventually we spent more time together as well playing games like mm -hmm. she was on my streams and stuff mm -hmm. we added each other on discord mm -hmm. so i made like a little server for us just to hang out just for youtube i was like i have this other server but you wanna, do you want to join this one just, just hang out and watch movies oh oops there's no one else here except us i think our official first date that i can remember was not even a date on her end but in my head i was like oh my god this is crazy. Oh we're my all, god. All, we're, we're watching Tron Legacy. <laughs> and eventually, yeah. like later, I, I kind of confess. The rest is history. That is the best way to explain How much that. Did your financial situation change? Astronomical. It was ridiculous. I'd never seen that much money in my life. <laughs> I was yeah. just like, what the f is happening? I felt like I was in Monopoly. I was like, did everyone just land on my square at the same time? What the f? Yeah, I'm everyone lands on your square. Here's $300. Like $14,000 a year. And I was also putting like half of that into the house with my mother. For a good while, I was barely getting taxed, you know, because I just wasn't earning enough. Yeah. <laughs> People come into my channel like, I'm going to uni. Uh, are you got any tips on like eating like cheap? And I was like, noodles, <laughs> amazing. Just You just get tons of noodles for like super cheap. Put a bit of ham in them one day, oh. a bit of chicken in the next day, mm. a bit of sweet corn. Dude, that's day. literally so ramen. Every you buy like a 10 pack for meal, two bucks. <laughs> Just, you better prepare You'll get sick slurping. of it, but it keeps you alive. You're slurping a lot. You were blowing up, seeing insane numbers on Twitch. You were seeing insane numbers on YouTube, but you still worked at your day job throughout that whole process. Yep, still worked in retail. Even like three of my friends. God, I work in retail, retail right now. I hate it. You want Twitch? Well, like it's, they were screaming it's not the worst. It's not fun. I was so convinced it was just going to be one of those like 15 minutes of fame moments where you yeah. just like pop there for a bit and then. Um, so I was like, I'm just going to take it easy. I'm going to mm -hmm. keep doing what I've always been doing. I'm gonna make videos, I'm gonna stream, mm. and see where it goes. Mm. And if it goes somewhere, then I'll quit. So I think I waited like about two months, maybe three months. So you didn't have confidence that it would go anywhere? No, zero confidence. I was way too like accustomed to the internet as a whole, like how things get viral and yeah. then just disappear. And everyone That's... goes chasing after that sort yeah. of like viral hit. That's so thinking, true. Well, it's, it seems like it's gone viral. I'm being contacted by news outlets all over the place. Yeah. And literally almost everyone has seen it, but I'm still convinced at some point it will go away. I don't want to give up my day job and literally lose my income because I wasn't making a lot of money at the time. I was like bare bones, like helping my mom pay the bills. The moment it changed where it like really was a wake up call to me was when I got my first big paycheck from YouTube. I looked at the numbers and I was like, shit, that's like how much I would earn in two years at my job. <laughs> One paycheck. And I made that in a month and I was like, Oh, 
that I have to do something. <laughs> and I put in my two weeks notice not long after that, much to the hate from my manager. She did not like that. She when you see that, like though, you just gotta go <laughs> for it. She, like, you don't have much of a chance, me, but take chatty. it. Yeah. Did not chat to me at all. What do you think struck her? I think she was just, like, mad that I was leaving or, like, got got successful i don't know you or you can follow your dreams <laughs> you piece of shit how Imagine. dare you follow your dreams you and make more money be tax on and you were still giving half your paycheck to yeah. to help with the family home at that point when i had that job i lost my dad in like 2009 and uh that was pretty that was pretty bad he was already like not on the way out but essentially he was already leaving my mother he was leaving her because like she could not handle um just his bullshit pretty much he drank a lot and oh that was not physical violence but it was like mental abuse mm -hmm. and she put up with it for the entirety of me and my sister's childhood so it was for you for us she is an absolute trooper age of like teenager i kind of knew what was going on mm -hmm. i became like her main uh ally we tried helping him he always went back he always relapsed he would like literally gaslight my mother into thinking that money was just missing he would just threaten to leave mm -hmm. every time because we, we were not financially stable without him. He was quite happily just like leaving me, my mother and my sister to just fend for ourselves. So eventually it got to a point where my mo mother was like, okay, you're old enough, we, we have enough money. I'm gonna I'm get divorced him. I can't take it anymore. Mm. I was like, okay. But That's it, fair it, at that point happens, though. We were like actually on our own. Mm. So it, it just boiled down to, okay, knuckle down. What can we cut? What can we like, spend less on she was like I'm, I'm gonna have to ask more for this month i was like absolutely she already felt guilty about taking money off me and like she had to ask for more because she was just not like making enough and i was like mm. I'll, I'll help it's no problem but like when everything started to pop off in 2019 and like i started to become more popular i was like holy shit i can take care of her mm. i can like actually look after her dude that would be such a good anything. feeling so though thought that went through your head when you saw your paycheck yeah i remember i was in the car and we were going shopping um, and I and I looked at my phone. I got like the email from Google. I was like, "Mom, look at this." <laughs> she was like, "Oh my god!" She like she, she like froze. She had to, like yeah. stop where she was on the in, in the street. And I was like, "It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I can do with this." In secret, I paid off the mortgage as a Christmas present. Oh, oh. I the bank, and I was like, "Okay, I want to I want to do this in secret. Please don't send any email notifications." And then just gave her a little card at Christmas, and she she broke down. And it was like the happiest. I think I've ever God, like, that's so that. nice. It was just so, so cool to do that. I would love to do something like that, but I don't think do that'll have, happen for a very long time. I mean, that's always up here, but yeah. I'm very careful. Like, I don't spend too much money. Mm. I'm not investing in risky things, you know. Yeah. I'm not doing anything crazy that would lose everything in a heartbeat. I'll always have those savings, and if everything disappeared tomorrow, I'd be good. I'd be all right. Do you feel pressure to constantly grow or maintain your numbers? To some extent, yeah. People will still watch me if I just hang out and just do what I've been doing this whole time. And I know people will eventually get bored and move on to new things. And that's mm. totally fine. But I don't want to- Hey man, they all grow up. Me to such a way that I change completely. Mm. I want to just do what I like. Mm. And if people want to watch me enjoy things I like, then that's, that's cool. But I'm not gonna be like, ah, you know, Minecraft isn't performing very well. I think I'm gonna switch to Fortnite. You know? I'd much rather just be happier doing what I like to do. And I feel like a lot of people lose sight of that. Communities are built around the person. As long as you're having- Hey man, it that's a true statement right there. If, you, if you're not having fun playing the game that you're playing, then don't play it. If people don't wanna watch it, they'll go find people that are playing there. But if you have real supporters, for your community, they'll stick with you even if you're playing a game they're fun not a fan of. And providing fun content, mm -hmm. be playing anything during the Dream SMP. Mm. Like all my friends were doing like role play on Dream SMP, and that's when it was blowing up with the whole Le Manberg phase. And I was watching them just like skyrocket in popularity. And then uh, my friend Will, Will Brasso, yeah, he he convinced Dream to get me on. Mm. He's like, I really want Phil on the server, and I think he can be a good part of the, the team. And Dream was just like, sure, he sound, sounds like a cool guy, let's, let's get him on. I joined at one of the most pinnacle moments, some would say, and I killed Will. <laughs> so you were a key player, a villain. <laughs>
What's funny about that? That's probably why Will brought, was brought him on, though. Him. We secretly logged on, and he was like, "Phil, I need help with TNT placement. I'm so scared. I'm gonna blow up the server." Will didn't tell me previously that I was going to kill him or anything like that. He was just like, "You're gonna show up, and you're gonna stop me from pressing the button." And I was like, "Okay." And it's gonna fail, and everything's gonna blow up, and that's gonna be it. In my head, like we were role playing, and I'd never yeah. really role play that much. Yeah. And I could tell he really wanted me to kill him. Like, <laughs> I was like, "Shit, I'm gonna have to just okay. All right, if I don't." Do God, it, I'll on me. the spot. <laughs> If I go, Phil, Will, do I, do I kill you? Do I kill you now? That's fail RP. So I just, I committed. And he told me afterwards, he's like, Phil, that was great. I was like, man, you didn't tell me I was going to do that. He's like, Improv, good really, job. Proud of you. True. So, so all true. the reactions to you killing him were real. Yep. Nobody knew. What impact did that have on your viewership? So I went from like 2,000, 5,000 viewers to anywhere from... 40,000 to 100,000. And I couldn't quantify what? the numbers. I was looking at it, I was like, that's not real. And I remember the number, the viewership got so nuts. It started to get to me a little bit. I was like, shit, I need to not look at this number. And I figured out that you can click the button on OBS. If you click viewership, it just vanishes. Little tip it, for uh, small streamers, by the way. You can just click this and dude, hide it. Ig Don't look ignore at the, the numbers. Account. If you focus on the numbers. You. So like whenever I was streaming. Ignore it. If you focus on the numbers, and you're doing it wrong. Time. And I just noticed do it not to mess look. with me a bit. I was like, really self-conscious i was like click it so now just continue and, and i'll just look at chat i had tubbo on here and he mentioned you specifically yeah. as the person that told him how to turn off the viewer count so it didn't go to his head toby really really needed that. such I a think. good thing it, it was like messing with him it's the fluctuation like yeah. the highs and the lows make you think you're doing something wrong that's yeah. not necessarily the case. So giving him that option to just like not look at it, I think was is very crucial to a lot of people, not just Toby. At that point, if you're worrying too much about the viewership, you're not entertaining anybody. You're yeah. concentrating too much on numbers. Yeah. You're not having a good time. Be yeah. yourself. It's just bad all around. Instead Literally just your be yourself. Have fun. You and you. Yep. <laughs> it's just you talking to yourself in your head about what does this mean? Yeah. What am I going to do? And you put yourself in a loop and you can't get out. It's super important to just kind of disconnect from the numbers and pay attention to the people in your chat. Dad's uh yes. You're seen as a father figure for the community. Yeah. In many ways. People call you Dadza. Yes. <laughs> yeah. By the way, huge announcement. We are hosting a free live show on July 15th, and the production value is completely bonkers. You are not gonna want to miss this. I'm gonna fall through the ceiling live. Am I are you really oh, gonna wait, make that's fall tomorrow. through the ceiling live? Absolutely. Oh. And if you join us, you'll have the chance to make me spin the wheel of misfortune. A fun game. My team put together for me. You'll get to know the team that helped make this show possible. I'm and just we'll gonna string new low opening. Just a terrible there we go. Figure, <laughs> but, I mean, I swear all the time, dude. It's so weird when like parents come up to me with their kids, yeah. and like the kids are definitely too young to watch me. Yeah. And they're like, oh, he watches you all the time. He loves you. And I'm like, I swear so much. I am constantly saying shit. Yeah. I do it as a joke sometimes. Every sentence I have ends with. Yeah. <laughs> and they're letting them watch. Okay. It's mm. so I don't think I'm a very good father figure. I yeah. just give advice that is like <laughs> you're a, what people sometimes need to hear. You're a good dad What's advice funny, giver. That's what you I are, Phil. Because I was just the older person of the group. Pretty <laughs> yeah. much. I'm only 34. I'm hey, mother we are the same age. Okay? You talk <laughs> shit about Phil, you're talking shit about me. It doesn't hurt, but <laughs> it hurts a little bit. <laughs> Do you feel pressure to live up to this role model father figure? A tiny bit, but not that much. People would try and put me on a pedestal, but I'll knock that pedestal right the f down. I'm <laughs> like, I'm just not the dude. I think for the most part, it's a lot of people that don't have a father in their life mm. or their dad's a piece of shit. Bro, my dad was a piece of shit. I, I turned out all right. Yeah. I was fine. You don't need a good dad to be a nice person. <laughs> you can learn from other people. You can find role models in other people. I feel like that's a much more important way of like building who you want to be, essentially. Yeah. You know, nobody's yeah. perfect, but if you can take good aspects from other people. And I've actually found a few good role this. models online. I've actually followed their thing. It's really good. We Definitely recommend. About all the incredibly positive side effects of blowing up. Mm -hmm. Are there any negative side effects that you witnessed? When it comes to like viewership increasing, there's a lot of like hate that comes with that because they think, why is this person popular? And I didn't really experience it all that much until I joined the Dream SMP. Just a huge amount of exposure. Yeah, yeah. With more exposure comes more eyes, and with more eyes comes more people that don't like you that much. It's just basic math. Like, more well, there's always people that don't yeah, not people like, that you. like you. That's just like a people that don't like guarantee. You, also, you essentially get put on this giant pedestal of like this person 
has to be perfect. Otherwise, they do not deserve anything. I try not to let it bother me too much because it is such a small fraction of people. Right. And a lot of the time, it's people that don't even watch you. That's so true, people. What has been your They do it all the time. Thing? This one time I was just in a game store. Yeah. I had this sense when I know someone's wanting to talk to me. I got this feeling and I was like, I'm just gonna ignore that, it's fine. It was just this little kid just like hanging out. Yeah. But the thing that sort of indicated it a lot more to me was he said to his mom, hey mom, look at this cool gun. But like in a really weird way, like not the way a kid talks. Oh. <laughs> He definitely thought about that sentence a lot. Okay. It. Contemplating. Like about, I want to say like 20 seconds. He just turns around and just looks at me and just goes, Hi, Phil. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just like, Hi, man. Jesus, <laughs> hi. I get shot. Hello. Like, oh. It was very sad what happened to you in that cave with the baby zombie. Rest in peace. Without missing a beat, yeah. I, I immediately just react to him. I just go, yes, that was very, very messed up. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I bowed back to him. <laughs> just you guys just bowing to each other in the back of a game store. You guys understand. You understand each other. Like game store, just like, <laughs> what am I doing? The mutual agreements between it. So what's next for Phil's Do you have any big projects in the works nothing crazy i'm pretty chill i'm like mm. I'm, I'm quite happy just staying in my own lane just like chugging along i just enjoy like playing the game that i love and just like hanging out talking the chat like i don't want to do anything crazy i don't have any huge plans yeah. a lot of people feel have like fun man have, have fun huge lofty goal that they're working toward yeah. and they're made to feel lazy if they don't but in reality isn't what we really want in life to be content? I think so, yeah. I fully understand people that want to have lofty goals and they want to do like everything. I get it. But like, I'm fine. Like, I'm good. <laughs> you mean you're good living in the moment as I'm the moment good. exists? Yes, I'm very happy. <laughs> be happy while you got it. What is it about doing? That's what you got to do. That brings you the most joy. I get a lot of messages from people saying like, oh, I had a shit day, but like I turned on your stream and now I'm happy. And, that's it. and I keep telling everybody I'm just playing block game. Yeah. I'm literally just a dude behind a desk. But if I can provide a space for people to be safe, acknowledged, you know, feel valid and just comfortable, mm -hmm. like that's, that's an amazing thing. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't change that for the world. That's just so cool. I spent a day with Philza. That's that's so that really wholesome, man. I love that. His perspective that failure is an inevitable, necessary part of growth, which makes me wonder, how many of the things in my life that I once considered to be catastrophic failures were actually the catalyst for the things that I now appreciate? Oh, God, that makes me think about my old YouTube channels. Oh, in loving memory of Alex. Uh, salute Techno. Fly high, King, once again. Oh, wait, there's there's more. <laughs> the funniest part is, like, the misinformation of me being old goes so far that, like, people actually think I'm, like, 50. <laughs> like, How it's unfortunate. not that bad. People will have this sudden realization that I'm not 50 and be like, what the fuck? Wait. <laughs> I see when, when your name is brought up. Old. Old. Yeah, it's just a meme at this point. It's probably just the 12-year-olds, too. Anyone over the age of 20 when you're 12 is old. True. It's really weird when you pass the age in which your parents gave birth to you. Oh, I don't think about that. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, <No>. why? <laughs> God. Ah. Oh. God, dude, that was actually probably one of the most wholesome uh, interviews I've ever seen. God, Phil really makes me think. He makes me want to stream more, but then my social anxiety just kicks in. It's like, no, you're garbage. You can't stream. And then I turn on the stream and I get like 10 people watching on Twitch, which for Twitch, only having 123 followers, pretty good. So I'll take it. Any growth is growth enough. So also, God, that part with like failure is inevitable and failure is a big part of growth. I can see that quite true. I've had a lot of, I, I'm going to really, yeah, I'm going to relate this back to YouTube. I've had a lot of YouTube channels, I think probably four or five, and I have deleted all four of them, I'm pretty sure. At least I don't think any of them exist, but I am positive that I have deleted them, except like an old gaming channel that I haven't posted on in like two years. But yeah, pretty sure those are gone and they failed. They taught me a lot about what I was doing wrong and I think it's carrying over quite well to this channel. Anyway though, let's get to my actual video thoughts because I got some stuff to think about. Oh, honestly, I gotta say it, that part where Phil's like, yeah, you know, having that extra money, being able to help out your family, it's a great thing. Like, even though I don't make 
substantial amounts of money off YouTube or even streaming, actually even just being able to buy dinner for the family sometimes, it's an amazing feeling. So I love that Phil does that. It's honestly the best thing. Being able to give back even just a small amount or being able to pay for something genuinely is just an amazing feeling and I just wish I could do it more often. I'm starting to think that maybe Phil's being so cautious as a child really, really helped him be better at hardcore. I mean, you still weren't cautious enough to avoid the baby zombie and the spider, but besides that, most of the hardcore worlds, you're relatively cautious in because, you know, obviously you don't want to die and lose everything again. You didn't want to lose it the first time, but losing it twice might hurt, but knowing Phil, he's just going to come back for a second time around. Hopefully he doesn't die to a spider this time. I feel like that would be real karma and probably draw a huge hate towards spiders. Anyway, though, that is where I'll end today's video. So if you guys did like today's video, go on down and leave it a like and a comment down below. And also, while you're in the comment section, leave something you want me to check out. Again, that's probably not going to be happening anytime soon, but, you know, your videos can be left down there. Because I have Last Life, Third Life, Empires, and probably a lot of other videos to catch up on. And also, I think, Sneak Snag uh, playing Risk. So, yeah, I have a fair share of videos to get to. Anyway, though, I want to thank you all so much for watching today's video, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.